I would like to say that we feel ourselves very grateful for the invitation extended to us by President William Ruto to extend this state visit, the first ever of an Angolan head of state to the Republic of Kenya. The ways of our two countries come across in the far year of 1975 when the then president of Kenya, President Jomo Kenyatta, one of the great leaders of Africa at that time, uh, convened here on the Kenyan soil the leaders of the three liberation movements of our country with the aim of trying to unite them so that we could not reach at Independence Day divided. That was a commendable diplomatic effort made by President Jomo Kenyatta and that effort unfortunately and for reasons that have nothing to do with the will of Kenya ended up being forfeited for other reasons. Anyway, we have to thank that commendable initiative and from this, from that day, 1975, of that event which I've already mentioned, our destinies became much closer. Nevertheless, the level of our cooperation relations has not grown as one would expect. For all those years, we have been waiting up until we had the opportunity of signing this big number of cooperation instruments that of which we are going to do our utmost in order to implement them for the interest of the two peoples and the nations. These instruments include virtually all the fields of cooperation that range from agriculture, tourism, environment, and more concretely, wildlife, uh, a sector in which Kenya has a great mastery and we need to learn from Kenya's experience mainly because we also have some game parks and we are part of the so-called Okavango Zambes Transfrontier Conservation Area which will be the biggest area in our country and we need to get the experience of those who have mastery in these matters and amongst them without a shade of doubt we have to single out Kenya but other fields such as science ICT are also of our common interest not only that of, of Kenya but of Angola as well we have to single out the need for the resumption of the air connection between Nairobi and Luanda, which used to happen in the recent past, but due to COVID-19, that was interrupted and not resumed up until to date. So we, we committed ourselves during our deliberations today to do our utmost in order to resume that connection, not only the existing one, maybe to expand and have the two air companies to fly from both capitals, from and to both capitals. Trade between African countries is something that needs to be 
priority for our economies. For us to develop our continent, we need to correct the current situation whereby our exports are exclusively devoted to other continent and forgetting our own African continent. We need to have more trade amongst ourselves. Trade exchanges amongst us have to be increased substantially in terms of volume and regional integration that is already taking place here amongst the Eastern African countries should be expanded to other sub-regions and there we can have the bridge between SADC member states and EAC member states that have these kind of trade far well developed. So Angola is now chairing SADC and in this capacity we are going to make all our efforts in order to connect more in terms of trade exchanges between the two sub-regions. Mr. President, we have taken the commitment of bringing closer our nations and for such, first we need to bring closer people, people in general, but notably businessmen and one of great obstacles has been the visa issue as Mr. President have rightly put it out. We thank you for Kenya unilaterally has taken a further step in waiving visa not only on diplomatic passports but also on ordinary Passport so that Angolan citizens can freely enter the Kenyan territory. In these matters, in principle, reciprocity has to prevail as there has to be reciprocity. I've said to President Root that in our return back home, we will carefully consider the possibility of. Uh, extending a visa waiver on diplomatic passports as signed today and extend to other type of visas. So rest assured, Mr. President, that this is something that is not closed. So in my return to Rwanda with the Angolan government, we will consider and deal with this matter in as much as uh, the signing can take place at any moment either here or in the city of Luanda. We have been working already jointly uh, in a coordinated manner in order to contribute to building peace on our continent. Angola and Kenya are working in a delicate process which is the process of bringing peace in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. That is a complicated issue but it's not impossible. So that's why we are optimistic that together we will be able to find peace not only in the Democratic Republic of Congo but in general in the whole Great Lakes region in as much as this conflict is not merely an internal conflict but it has affected unfortunately the good relations that used to exist between the Democratic Republic of Congo and the neighboring country of Rwanda. So we are working together in order to reverse the situation. So far, as far as we have noted, the results of our endeavor have been positive. 
but we've reached it to a point where we cannot stop. We have to take the next step. And this is what we are doing. We are engaged in uh, continuing. We will not give in so that uh, the missing step can be taken so that eventually we can achieve the so much awaited peace in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo on one side and also to reestablish the good friendship and cooperation relations that used to exist between the two sister countries, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda. I would like to seize this occasion, Mr. President, to thank you publicly for Kenya having availed itself to support Angola's candidacy at the chairmanship of African Union in 2025-2026. And we thank you for that. So please, Mr. President, you may also count on us that we are on the side of Kenya for the mission that you are going to undertake at the United Nations, uh, being a sister country of uh, uh, African descendants, which is Haiti, based on Kenya's experience in peacekeeping missions in other countries, we are pretty sure that in this mission you are also emerge successfully in as much as there is a willingness to help our brothers and sisters who unfortunately are going through a situation of domestic instability that needs to be corrected. Mr. President, allow me also to seize this occasion with cameras and microphones to invite you, Mr. President, to officially on a state visit to the Republic of Angola on the best convenient moment for you that is to be negotiated between our two diplomacies. So we are willing and hopeful that such a date will be very soon so that we can close, but not really close. We can consolidate the start of uh, visit exchange at the highest level between the heads of state of Angola and Kenya. So, Mr. President, everyone present, the two delegations, once again, I would like to say that we are very grateful for the very warm and brotherly and friendly manner we've been received here at the city of Nairobi in our first state visit. Thank you very much. Applause, please, for their excellencies. Let's give them another round of applause. Thank you. Your Excellencies, with your permission, we'll now go to questions from media, uh, members of the press. And let's start with your name, the media house you represent. If the question is specific to a specific president, please mention with a maximum of two questions per media house. Over to you for your questions. Okay. Good morning. This question is to, uh, my name is Gerald Kiala from uh, Angola newspaper. This question is to His Excellencies President William Hutu. Mr. President, follow the meeting with His Excellencies President John Lorenzo. What can we expect on a, on a tourism cooperation between the two countries? Thank you. 
Thank you so much. My name is Seth Olale. I represent Citizen TV uh, here in Kenya. Um, mine goes to the host president, uh, Dr. William Samui Ruto. Uh, in regards to uh, the processes that is in regards to the peace agreement, the political and the uh, diplomatic uh, interventions and especially in Eastern DRC in regards to the Luanda process and the Nairobi process, both ensuring that there is stability in Eastern DRC. Is the Luanda process uh, in agreement with what the Nairobi process is doing towards making the Eastern DRC uh, a stable nation or that but uh, that particular region of DRC, or are there emerging issues? We saw recently of uh, a need for an intervention in regards to the ICRAF mandate. This is the joint forces of the East Africa forces, an extension towards ensuring that there is ceasefire in Eastern DRC. Does Luanda also share the same sentiments as Nairobi process? Thank you. Thank you. We'll start with those two questions, please. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, on the subject of tourism, as Mr. President uh, said earlier, we have, as a country, a bit more experience in the space around tourism